Hi, I'm Bob Bell, and I'm President and CEO of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And we are participating in our 23rd North American CF Conference in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. Uh, you know, we have participating over 3,400 individuals, scientists, clinicians, and caregivers from throughout the world in what is going to be an amazing North American conference. You know, we are now talking about new therapeutics. This meeting today really focused today on the opportunities we have to treat the basic defect in cystic fibrosis. I'm joined this evening with, by Francis Collins, the new director of the National Institutes of Health. In the cystic fibrosis community, we know Dr. Collins as the individual who, along with Lapchi Choi and Jack Reardon, discovered the CF gene nearly 20, over, near, exactly 20 years ago. Uh, and we, we commemorated that in an earlier symposium today, uh, and it was really a moving experience for everybody to, to recognize and to sit back and reflect how far we've come in the 20 years since the discovery of the CF gene. So I, I want to ask Dr. Collins now, uh, my first question is, Dr. Collins, why did you uh, start to look at the CF gene when, when you did 23 years ago, I guess, at this point? I first met cystic fibrosis as a clinical problem. I was a medical intern at the University of North Carolina, and one of the patients I was assigned to take care of was a nurse who had cystic fibrosis with rather late onset. She didn't get diagnosed until she was a teenager. And, you know, being a curious uh, budding physician, I was determined to understand this disease, and I began to read about it and realized there was just an awful lot of things we didn't know. It was clearly a genetic problem, but nobody identified the gene, and it didn't look like there was a good way to get there. I kind of filed that away in the back of my mind as, boy, that would be a great problem to work on someday. And a few years later, getting involved in this effort to track down disease genes, something called positional cloning, finding the gene by its position somewhere on a chromosome, cystic fibrosis seemed like the perfect disease to go after. It was common, it was serious, we didn't know enough about it. There were a lot of families who were w willing to be part of research. There was a foundation that supported that research. So that became the main topic in my lab as a budding assistant professor at Michigan. I've heard you describe the search for the CF gene as a search for the needle in a haystack and a journey. Mm -hmm. Could you describe the journey and what it was like during those exciting times from about 1987 to 1989 when we were getting close? Getting close, but it always seemed like it was just out of reach. And my goodness, we would have these experiences of thinking we found it and then look at it a little more closely and, well, it wasn't a needle after all, it was just more haystack. It was a very challenging problem to sift through millions of letters of the DNA code at a time where we knew very little about it and try to identify the answer. We knew there was an answer, so in a certain way, it was like a good detective story. You know when you get to the last page, you're going to find out who done it. But there's a lot of chapters before you get there, and it seems like we got stuck in a few of those. And then one day, uh, a day in May of 1989, Lapchi and I were attending a meeting at Yale, uh, on mapping genes, and, but we were really thinking about what was going on back in our own labs, and Lapchi had set up a fax machine in his dorm room because we were all staying in the dorms. It was a low-budget meeting, I might say. <laughs> and we went back after that afternoon session and looked at the data, and that was the moment where you could see there's this deletion of just three letters of the DNA code, and it pops up over and over again in people with cystic fibrosis. That's it. We have found it. So we discovered this gene. So what did you perceive at that point what it was ultimately going to mean to CF drug development and ultimately moving toward developing new therapies to treat cystic fibrosis? I think at the time we found the gene, we had this general sense that we'd crossed into new territory and that opportunities were going to open up uh, therapeutically, but we didn't really quite know what they would look like. Uh, did I know much about drug development in 1989? Mm, you know, almost nothing. There was a lot of expectation that maybe the gene therapy approach would be the way to go. A lot of us uh, worked pretty hard on that before realizing just how hard that was going to turn out to be. But over the course of the years since then, and with great support from you and the CF Foundation, really leading the world in terms of taking this gene discovery to the therapeutic promise that it now has, it's been possible by very hard work done by hundreds of scientists figuring out what does that gene normally do 
and what's wrong when you have those three letters missing that you might be able to compensate for with a drug. And now here we are, 20 years later, with the most exciting evidence that it's not just a hoped-for outcome, but there are now compounds, drugs, in clinical trials based on that knowledge that look very promising. And that's the best possible thing to be able to talk about right now. You often talk about the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation being leaders and uh, like to be out in front of the pack. Could you tell us about the new program that you are rolling out at the uh, NIH at this point for other uh, rare diseases uh, and the impact of our leadership has, and what impact our leadership has had on that program? I never dreamed, uh, chasing after the CF gene, that someday I would be asked to serve as the director of the entire National Institutes of Health, but that's what's happened. So I would like to do everything I can to build on that amazing experience that's happened with CF and expand that to hundreds of other diseases, diseases that otherwise aren't going to get much attention or have much hope in terms of therapeutics, but where CF has shown the way, has lit up the path. Some of those are diseases that afflict people in other countries in the developing world, which also aren't getting much attention. But the good news here is that the approach of trying to identify a small molecule is a generalizable one. And what's been learned for CF is not a one-off, it's something that can be extrapolated, generalized, to hundreds of other diseases. That is a goal of this new program called TREND, which stands for Therapeutics for Rare and Neglected Diseases. And it is just now getting off the ground, but I am quite confident this is one of the most important milestones that you've seen at NIH in a long time, the establishment of that kind of intentional translational therapeutic enterprise, and all building upon the case that can be made from CF, that the time is right, the science is ready for this. In fact, it is so compelling that CF has led the way that I've now hired your a physician who is leading your therapeutics program, Melissa Ashlock, to come and lead Trend, because the experience that she has is going to be invaluable, and I appreciate how gracious you have been, if you have been. I haven't really been gracious, <laughs> but, you know. In allowing this. You know, you said you started out uh, being involved in CF because of a patient. What would you say today to a family with a young child who had just been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis? From what you heard today and what you've read, what would you say to them about their, their, their future? It is undoubtedly scary for any couple to learn they have a child with cystic fibrosis to get that diagnosis when oftentimes that's not a familiar condition at all. Maybe a little bit of information, maybe none at all until suddenly it's your child. But I could say categorically uh, to such a family that the hope now that that child will live a long and full life has never been better. The development of these new drugs promises to take what is already amazing advances in survival and CF, uh, now almost age 40, and to extend that out so that a child born today with this disease, I think, has an enormously high likelihood of a long, productive, and essentially healthy life. So we were really privileged to have Dr. Collins, even a new job, to come out to, uh, to uh, Minnesota and, and share his story about this incredible journey uh, that uh, he's been part of, has led, because uh, it has been an incredible journey. And uh, when he ended his, um, uh, the, his the plenary session today, he, uh, you, you, and not everybody knows that you are a very accomplished musician. In fact, uh, you were recently been playing, I saw a video of you playing with Aer Aerosmith, is that the group? That's Aerosmith. That's and he was, uh, he was on stage, but he led a song uh, in which we had 3,400 people singing the song, Dare to Dream. And that's what he has done over the years. He's dared to dream. And that's what we all do in the cystic fibrosis. We dare to dream. And, and what is so exciting is that many of those dreams are now becoming a reality when you think that we have so many drugs that are going through the final stages of the FDA-required studies and hurdles that you have to go through, treating the basic defects. So we've dared to dream, but we are beginning to deliver on those dreams.